Here's another interesting application of that intermediate value theorem. So if you have a rubber band, obviously if I were to stretch it um, equal amounts in each direction, then there's a point on the rubber band that didn't move, right here in between, right? There must be some point that didn't move at all. But what if I don't necessarily stretch it equal amounts either way? See, in this case, since I moved it the same amount, this stretched it the same amount this way and that way, then obviously the point right in the middle must have stayed the same. It didn't change at all. But what this is saying is if you take that rubber band and you maybe stretch it just a little bit one way and stretch it more that way, that there should still be some point in here that didn't move at all when you stretched it. Well, that's kind of interesting, and we can use um, the intermediate value theorem to show that this is actually true. What we would do, let's just start in general with our rubber band as it originally was, and then on the other axis I'll mark the rubber band as it's going to be after we stretch it. So, okay, so we have, let's make some axes here. And we have the original locations of the endpoints, A and B. And then later on, we have, after we stretch it, F of A is the new endpoint, and F of B is the other endpoint. And there must be, since it's a rubber band, right, that, mu that stre function that we stretched it would be continuous. Now, probably it would be <clears throat> a straight line, but um, maybe it's... Uh, some nonlinear function maybe because there's weakness in the rubber bands at different places and so it stretches more than in other places. But what we definitely know is that we moved one end to the right, so that would mean that the value of the endpoint after stretching, f of a is less than a, and we move the other end to the left, so we move this, uh, we move, sorry, we move one end to the left and one end to the right. So that tells us that f of b is greater than I think I've got that right. So we moved, um, A was the, the left endpoint, and we've moved that to the left. So now F of A is less than A. We also know that F of B is greater than B. Good. So if we look at um, this function, make a new function here. We have our function F of X here that describes the stretching. So given any initial point on the rubber band, then we can figure out where it got stretched to by using that function f of x. I'm going to make um, a new function. I'm going to call it g of x. g of x is going to be f of x minus x. And here's what I know. g of a would be f of a minus a. And I know that f of a is less than a. So if you have a number less than a, you subtract a. That's going to be less than 0. I also know that g of b would be f of b minus b. And since I know that I move the right end point of the rubber band to the right, I know that this has got to be higher. So f of b is greater than b. So if I take a big number and subtract a number smaller, that's still got to be positive. So <clears throat> assuming that the stretching of this rubber band was continuous, then the intermediate value theorem says there is a C, so, so we could say by the IVT, the Intermediate Value Theorem, there is a C between A and B such that since um, this function G, at one point it's below the x-axis and another point it's above the x-axis. There's got to be some point where it's on the x-axis, right? So there's a point C such that G of C equals 0. But G of C would be F of C minus C. And solving this equation says that F of C equals C. That means that the location of this one point C after it was stretched was the same as its original location. So that's the point. There's, there's this point C that didn't move. Right? Okay, and it's all based on the intermediate value theorem because we cooked up a continuous function that was below the x-axis at some point 
and above the x-axis at another point, we know for a continuous function that it has to achieve every single value between um, its, its uh, two, the, the outputs at its two endpoints, and so it definitely has to achieve the zero value, and that tells us that f of c minus c was zero, and so f of c was equal to c. So the location of the point before stretching was the same as the location of the point after stretching, so that point didn't move.